St. George is famous for slaying a dragon in 275 A.D. Beowulf is famous for killing dragons. He was finally killed by a dragon when he was 88 years old. But uh, the Beowulf story, when they translate it to modern English, says Beowulf killed Grendel the dragon by pulling off one of its arms and the creature bled to death. What a strange story. Pulled off his arm. Well, most folks that study the T-Rex will tell you his front arms were pretty weak and puny. And I don't know if this was the dragon they're talking about or not, but probably if you could ever get a way to get a hold of it, you could probably jerk one of his arms off. Siegfried is famous for slaying the dragon Fafner, famous Norwegian hero from a thousand years ago. Marco Polo lived in China for 17 years. When he came back, he reported, the emperor is raising dragons to pull chariots in his parades. If you go to Ica, Peru, They've got the driest desert in the world down there. It's only rained once or twice in 400 years. Not a good place for a garden. When the Spanish came across that area in 1570s, they, saw, they found white lines going across this desert. They said, obviously man-made lines. Why would somebody make this white line? It goes for miles across the desert. Nobody knew what these white lines were until they got airplanes. And they realized these are actually giant pictures. How many have ever heard of those before? They're called the Nazca Lines down in Peru. Amazing. When they came across there in 1571, the Spanish found stones with strange animals carved on them. They'd never seen an animal like that, so they brought the stones back to the king of Spain and said, what are these? He said, I don't know. They're called the Nazca Burial Stones. I have three of them in my museum in, here in Pensacola. I have two of them on the table with me tonight. One is a replica. I have three originals, though. These Nazca burial stones that are found down there have dinosaurs and humans together. Of the thousands of stones that were found, about 500 contain dinosaurs and humans together. They show all sorts of things like heart surgery, brain surgery, strange things on these stones. Dr. Baugh has two in, in Texas. Uh, Don Patton has one. Dennis Swift has two, I think, and we have three. There's only 15 in the whole United States. Three of them right here in Pensacola. Come on down and see our world famous, small right now, but we're getting there, uh, museum. We'll take over to Smithsonian here one day. Anton, well, that's a friend of mine. He went down there and spent eight months studying the Ica stones. Dennis Swift is a pastor in Oregon. He goes down there every year, talks to Dr. Takara. Down in Ac Acamburo, Mexico, you're from Mexico, right, brother? Missionary? You ever been to Acamburo? You know where that's at? Go to Mexico City, turn right, go about an hour and a half. Middle of nowhere. I've been to Mexico City. You've been to Mexico City? Okay, thank you, sir. That's good. And you're his son. Okay. Amen. In Acamburo, Mexico, they found 56,000 ceramic figurines of dinosaurs and people together. 
The people in the town are real quiet about it because it just really upsets all the theories about evolution. There are stories of octopus actually pulling ships underwater. You say, come on, octopus never get that big. Oh, they get pretty big. This one washed up on the beach in St. Augustine, Florida, 100 years ago. The octopus was 200 feet across and weighed five tons. That's a big octopus. A whale was killed near Seattle, Washington. Inside the whale's stomach was one arm to an octopus. It was 150 feet long. See, whales love to eat octopus. And if a whale eats too much octopus, he'll get sick and puke it back up. And if you ever see a piece of puked up octopus floating around in the ocean, be sure to grab it. It's worth a lot of money. Does anybody know what they make out of puked up octopus? Yes? Oil? Perfume. That explains a few things, doesn't it, fellas? <laughs> hey, dear. You smell like a puked up octopus. <laughs> You know, whales love to eat octopus and squid, but octopus and squid never stop growing. There have been some awfully big squid seen out there in the ocean. Navy research vessel saw a giant squid attacking a giant whale in 1966 off the coast of Newfoundland. At Yale University, they've got the model of a giant squid hanging over my head there, Peabody Museum. This baby giant squid washed up on the beach in New Zealand. They said full grown, it would have been 150 feet long. That's a big squid. People say, now wait a minute, if dinosaurs always lived with man, like you're saying, why aren't they mentioned in the Bible? Well, they are. Dinosaurs are in the Bible. Now, the word, the word dinosaur isn't used. That word wasn't made up till later, you know. But... They're called other names, which I'll show you. If you get the book of Job, the book of Job has 42 chapters. In the first two chapters, it says, Job was a perfect man. He feared God and hated evil. He had seven sons and three daughters. And he had thousands of sheep and camels and oxen and asses. The guy had lots of money, okay? He was extremely wealthy. And one day the messenger came and said, Job, I have some bad news. All of the oxen uh, and asses were stolen, and your servants all got killed. And by the way, your sheep all got burned up. And the camels got stolen too. Now Job was having a bad day, called the Hebrew stock market crash. That's where the word stock market comes from, I think. Stock, you know, animals, never mind. Uh, another messenger came and said, Job, guess what? All ten of your kids just died. Hmm. Then Satan gave Job boils from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. And to top it off, his wife turned against him. Job's really having a bad day. God never did tell Job why his kids died. He never did tell him why his livestock was stolen. He never did tell him any of that. All he did was ask him question after question after question. Hey, would you keep serving God if everything went wrong and you never found out why? Job did. <laughs>